the ditch. I'm Nat Taylor. <laughs> I'm Kalani Purcell. Oh, keep it fresh. Dang it. Oh my God. So many things wrong. Here's what we got lined up on the show today. Yeah. Always wanted to like jump in the ring and experience it. Really exciting to share our Waiatai voices with everyone here. I think we both play a bit aggressive. Got that from Dad. That's the one. This is the one answer. This is the one answer. <laughs> We got the goods for a mean show. <laughs> Cause you, man. I'm trying to make it hard. That's why you got to snatch it. Oh. First up, we got fresh tips with our girls Putty and Des. <laughs> Creepy guys who will give you unwanted, unsolicited, unworthy, disgusting, 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 disgusting attention. So to help you deal with these scenarios, we've come up with a few tips on how to deal with the unwanted attention from construction workers, <laughs> couriers, men on the train, men at the supermarket, I and mean, the traffic lights, the window washers, the window washers. <laughs> One, travel in packs. This is the oldest trick in the book. And the easiest way to avoid unwanted attention from <coughs> men. He's um, still there. I like him. <laughs> Always make sure you're rolling with your friends, okay? And tip number two, act like you can't speak English. <laughs> hey. Uh -huh. I got a horse. Do you like to ride? Uh, Kile, uh, Mala Malama, Kile. You speak Samoan? Oh. Okay, tell my Samoa. Panama? Palibu's Anglais? Oh, Panadol? Tip number three be brutally honest. And it's best to just let him know that you're just not interested. No, no, je ne. Je veux... You know what? I do speak English. I speak English. I'm oh. just not interested. Oh. <laughs> Yeah, it's hard to get one, too. Hey? No. Um, oh, my No, that's wrong. I'm just not interested. I'm really sorry. So you still need that right home? It's important to be assertive, but also important to be safe. Also remember, we wouldn't need these tips if you guys weren't such creeps, OK? That's the tea. So don't be a creep. Don't be a creep. Please don't be a creep. Say, I'm a DM. And we're gonna send it hey. to your wife and your, and your mama. That's us for this week. Catch us next week for some more brown girl tips. You don't want to get on the wrong side of this, Wahine. Check out our poly sister on the rise. Kia 
Tarana, I'm Bernie King, I'm a kickboxer and I'm on the rise. I was born in New Zealand, I'm half Cook Islander, half New Zealand Māori. I grew up here in the Cook Islands when I was younger, then I moved to Samoa and then uh, moved to New Zealand to do my high school years and then I moved back here recently, a couple of years ago. So I sort of always wanted to like jump in the ring and experience it, but I never really had the guts to. So um, actually one day Mel, my old trainer, came up to me and asked me if I actually wanted to have a fight. And I was like, yeah, yeah, I'm keen as, I want to jump in the ring, of course. So originally I wanted a, a kickboxing fight, but um, my trainer couldn't, couldn't get me one. So he said, if you want to still experience in the ring, then um, we can get you a boxing fight. And so I was keen for that. I just wanted to jump in, experience it. I wasn't that well prepared, but it was a really great experience, like just being in the ring, it was, yeah, it's, <laughs> it's like nothing else matters. So basic training is like, we've got to warm up first, go for a run, then do some skipping, um, do a few push-ups, and then get into some pad work, some bag work, and then, um, yeah, do some sparring and stuff. So obviously there's not many um, kickboxing gyms around the island. So we're quite um, narrow to who, who trains on the island. They're trying to grow the sport here. Um, so what Muay Thai Cook Islands is doing is trying to expand to other countries, um, you know, inviting them over and so the Cook Islanders can actually experience the outside. So the Cook Islands kickboxing scene here is growing. So if you're ever on a holiday or something and you want to come over and have a fight or just experience the training, come and bring it. Like my majestic sense. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we've got a quick break, but don't go anywhere. Got more fresh goodness after the break, freshies. <laughs> that just reminded me, when we rolled around Italy with a speaker bag. <laughs> what the heck? Getting Te Reo Māori on that platform, especially with Holly Smith, because Wait, she's got a main voice. <laughs>
when we rolled around Italy with a speaker bag. <laughs> what the heck? I wasn't part of that team. <laughs> it was a cool speaker bag. <laughs> There's been heaps of yeah. good things. Like Olympics for me in Beijing in 08, no experience like it, it was pretty epic. Last pre-Olympic qualifier in New Zealand in November, yeah. that was really awesome yeah. to be able to have our family and friends be there and stuff. When I was pretty young, I would have been maybe 16 or 17. I wanted to become a good shooter and one of my coaches in New Zealand told me like so much of it is in your mind. To think that you are a good shooter, and then put the work in. Even now, like, I, I'll miss 20 shots in a row, but in my mind, I'm like, I'm gonna make the next 20 shots. I reckon that's probably actually helped me the most over the years. Yeah, mine's just probably, like, my whole family. I mean, yeah, pretty much, that's pretty much it, just everyone. I'm glad I could inspire you. Oh, thanks. <laughs> I've got two kids. I work for a property developer, and then me and my husband also run a gym. Pretty busy. <laughs> well, I have no kids <laughs> and also no job outside of basketball, so that's a lie. I babysit her kids. She does. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was nice. Obviously, I'm at the end of my career and um, wouldn't be captain forever. The fact that it went to you, my little sister, made me feel pretty proud and um, yeah, happy, happy for the team, happy for you. Sometimes annoying to listen to, but you know, aside from that, it's pretty cool. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs>The event is called Tira, Tira meaning choir. It's about everybody coming together and gathering around some prominent New Zealand artists, uh, mostly Māori in um, heritage, and um, singing songs together as a community. So that's what Tira is all about. I came this year because I went last year and I loved it. It's just so great. You get all of these people from all over the place, Fano, um, from all nationalities, from all over Aotearoa, and everyone gets together and for a sing. And I think that's one of the best things you can ever do, is sing together. Uh, we hail from the north, from Pihi Awari Marae. Um, te tai tokiro, ngā te hau, ngā puhi, dudes, that's us. So we've been invited actually to come and share our, our waiata, our voices with everyone here in Tamaki Makaurau. And we will actually be backing up, alongside. singing alongside um, Holly Smith, Holly which is really Smith. exciting. Yeah, yeah can't main wait. Main She's got a mean voice. <laughs> I am a mixture of excited and anxious and uh, nervous. It's always nice to have a role model that can speak to the all and um, yeah, to send it near and far to, to everyone. Um, yeah. and to promote it, good promotion. And just getting Te Reo Māori on that platform, especially with Holly Smith, because she's so well known um, around Aotearoa. And Bathe in the River is such a famous song. So, um, yeah, I guess it's just getting Te Reo Māori onto that platform. And, good choice. Yeah. This is a very amazing way to unite people with our real. I mean, like, um, there's, you know, a world in each word, and once these people realise what our world and our words, you know, they'll understand us a bit more, but we have to let them in. Maybe just the familiarity will uh, take away the fear that they may have of something a bit different. So just, just, uh, just getting people used to it, I think, is really, really helpful. That's what the great thing is about a festival that has committed to having Reo Māori as an intrinsic part of the festival. Not just something you park over there and write some nice words about, but actually part of the programme. You see all of the information in Te Reo Pākehā, in Te Reo Māori, Anō Hoki. Great. That's, that's treaty partnership.
right, where you are, fans? You don't want to miss our favorite game show. Pew, pew. Oh, <laughs> 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 Leading the way with 50 points and team R with Woo. on the point okay. <laughs>
back. We have our team. Oh, wait, no, okay. Uh, we see in the sun around. for quite a while. <laughs> Uh, by the gap, I think in uh, <coughs> Roger Toy Vasa Roger yeah. to the Ooh. Just by looking at the camp. Wow. <laughs> wow. Oh, there you have it. Oh, what a great one there by Now we're going to go for the third one. Nice. It's even, Steven, at the moment. 100 points to 100 points. This one could be the back breaker. Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. Oh. Oh, no. Like <clears throat> what do you think yeah. by the ear? It's an ear. I will go for KJ Upper. <gasps> Whoa! Oh. <gasps> That's a good kiss, but nowhere near. Oh. Ah. Yeah, no, no. Next clue, please. <laughs> Stephen Adams. Ah, uh, what's that? For Steven. bonus point, what team does he play? Oklahoma... City Thunder. City Thunder. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Stephen Adams! <laughs> Woo! Well, there you have it, ladies and gentlemen, with 3,000 points, yeah. 72. <laughs> so let's give a big hand and thank you guys for coming today. We have some uh, vouchers here from Westfield. That is $3,000. Oh. So we hope to see you at the same time next week on... How, How Fresh Are You? you? Yeah! Woohoo! Thanks, guys. <laughs> thank you. That's our freshies. It's been sick here bringing you fresh today. Keep it fresh. Here's what's coming at you next week. Talafa, <laughs> welcome to the PolyX experience right here in Mangri. Keep it fresh. Keep it fresh. <laughs> Until then.